Paid citations. Hello, my darling Fumination. <laughs> How are you, my darlings? How are you? How are we? My name is Fumi De Salovold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very, very first time, you're so very welcome to my humble abode. Before I continue, I would like to say thank you so very much for the 400,000 followers. I am speechless. Never in my wildest dreams. Never in my wildest dreams. Um, I started this channel at 45 and um, I didn't know where it was going. I was just truly having fun with it. And I will give you this tip. When I started, it really truly was about makeup. I love makeup. And I was really doing what everybody else was doing. If a latest palette came out, I would get it to review because I just assumed this was the beauty community and so this is what it was expected of me. And um, as I approached 50, I just became very liberated in who I was and I just wanted to really be my authentic self. I think also, I began to know you guys. I really enjoy doing what I do. You will never know to the nth degree how much I have been inspired by you. As much as you tell me you're inspired by me, it's in no comparison. And so I started with the bra hacks because I began to not take you as an audience, but really as daughters, as sisters, as friends, just girls that were super, super cool. It transitioned from trying to get followers to loving my daughters and sisters. I'm 53, so you understand. I never had a daughter, but I have 400,000 of you. And so the journey began. I opened up my mind. I took the leap of faith. I said, I'm going to do what I think these girls need and the channel grew, and it's not stopped. So thank you. Thank you for pushing me and appreciating me, and in so many ways saying, Fumi, we love you truly as you are. That is the advice I could give any YouTuber, any content creator, any MUA, any actress, anybody in show business, be who you are. That is truly what the audience craves. Thank you for the 400,000. I'm beyond speechless. Now, because I said I'm not going to cry. <laughs> the makeup is too fabulous. <laughs> the other day, I did top 10 things that you have to know going into a relationship. Yes, let me just double check and make sure that I have the exact words of what I put there. Yes. Last week, I released two episodes for you guys upon request. One of them was my top 10 rules to follow when dating. A sure guarantee for you to walk down the aisle. You guys loved it. You said for me, we want to have top 10 for single moms. You guys loved it even more. And I had talked about what to ask for, what to look for in the beginning of dating. And I had mentioned in the last episode, do not ignore the red flags. All of you came right out and said, Auntie Fumi, yes, my darling, what are the red flags? <laughs> Tell us what are the red flags and give us some suggestions in relation to red flags that we have to look for. Here I am. <laughs> we have... 10. 10 red flags that you should look for in an early relationship. Let us say three months. Three months is enough for you to bring out your book and say to yourself, all right, tax man, I have invested in this. I want a return. Because if you're not getting a return, my darlings, you need to take your bag and go somewhere else where somebody can see your crown and your fabulosity. Here we go with number one. Number one, red flag. He doesn't ask questions about you, the lack of interest to get to know you, 
what you like, your passion, your interest. If somebody is interested in you, let's talk about this. They will ask for me, so what do you like? What are your interests? Where did you grow up? What schools did you go to? Do you have brothers? Do you have sisters? How was life for you A, B, and C? If the person is not showing interest in your well-being, when you go out, he says, oh, you know what, what do you like to eat? Are you a fish person? Are you a meat person? Do you like shrimp, crab, that kind of thing? They have to ask in the early days of the three months where they can sit him down and they can ask basic questions about you and he's able to answer. If he's not asking questions about you, he's not showing interest about your past and like I said, your job and you know, your ambitions and all of that. Getting to know your core, you, that, those lovely intimate conversations that you have at the back of the restaurant. You're just really kicking it and enjoying yourself. If he is not asking you questions about you, it's a red flag because indirectly he's not interested. He's not interested. There's no passion there for you. Number two. He doesn't want to label the relationship after months of dating, nor has he asked you to be exclusive with him. I will tell you here and now, Ula asked me to be exclusive with him day three. He said, do you mind if we're kind of exclusive? I like you. I was very surprised because I thought, you know, it's very, very early days. But he asked right away. If a guy likes you, and I'm going to give it more time because Ula and I is very rare. It's not fair to use that as a benchmark. But if you are dating for a month, let us see. And he has not said, you know what? I would love for you to be exclusive with me. I would like for you to be my girlfriend. Or refers to you as my girlfriend. You're sitting at a restaurant. Can you please give my girlfriend some more water? He has not said that in three months. It's a red flag. It is a glaring neon red flag. Number three, in these days of social media, in the three months that you have been dating, he has not posted you on his social media. He has not put you on his Instagram page to acknowledge that you know what, he's with you. Not even in the Instagram stories. Nada. Ghost. That's a red flag. Because I'm positive in the three months that you've been seeing him, you posted him somewhere along the line. If he has not posted you anywhere on Facebook, on Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, what else, YouTube, whatever, stories, WhatsApp, he has not one time. It's a red flag. Your family does not like him. It's a red flag. Your friends don't like him. It's a red flag. And when I say your family, all your family members, your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your nephews, your nieces, your aunties, they've all met him individually and they've garnished enough of an opinion of him to say, eh, I don't like him. It's a red flag. All of them cannot be wrong. You turn around the corner and go to your best friend. She's not feeling him. Your casual friend that you say hi to is not feeling him. It's a red flag. Sometimes, my darling, and I have seen this before, you go against everything. Oh, they're just jealous. Oh, they're not feeling him. Oh, they don't understand him. No, mama, they understand him very well. It's just that you are looking at him with rose-colored lenses and you are not looking at what counts. They don't have anything to do with him. They're not in love with him, so they can see it for what it is. It's a red flag. It's a red flag where you have to put it onto the calendar and say to yourself, hmm, and it's hurtful because you like him. It's hurtful, I get it. But I'm telling you, avoid the heartache further down. He does not introduce you to his friends or his family. Nobody. <laughs> he does not introduce you to any family member and none of his friends. Let's flip it. Let's flip it, guys. It is like me with you guys, as you know, I love. I don't talk about 
the guy that I'm seeing. Let's just say I was single, okay? I don't tell Christina. I don't tell Runke. I don't tell my mom. I don't tell my dad. I don't tell Eric, my agent. <laughs> it's bizarre. It's a red flag. He calls you only at night. He's got you on schedule. Which means that he has a routine with somebody elsewhere. So that's his free time to talk to you. A guy that is single, that loves you, that likes you, that wants to be with you spontaneous. He's happy to be with you, speak to you at any time of the day. Even if he cannot, even Ula. Honey, I'm in a meeting. He'll just text you real quick. Everything okay? I'll call you back. He'll respond right away. Because you know what? That's my heart. That's my boo right there. If he's only calling you at night, it is a booty call. It is a booty engagement, entanglement, trying to be. He is not serious. He is trying to make you a side chick. You're not trying to see him at night. That was why I had said in the first set 10 of rules, don't see him in the evenings. Let him go and take a cold shower, look for somebody else that might most probably say yes. But you, no. You are trying to get the ring. So if he is calling you at night, don't pick up the calls on a regular basis. Pick one of every four. Oh yes, he never initiates a date. Child, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're in trouble. He doesn't initiate a date. He doesn't surprise you with flowers. He doesn't surprise you with chocolates, with perfume. He doesn't give you like a little gift, even like a wrapped sandwich in beautiful wrapping paper, you know, penciled with love notes. Something that is different, that is special, just to make you smile. Or come to your work and leave it at the, leave it at the reception or whatever to give it to you. Or surprise you and say, I want to take you out for lunch. He doesn't initiate anything special for you. In the three months, in the 90 days that you have been buying makeup at Sephora, that you went to go and get your wigs done, you got a fresh set of nails, pedicure as well. You shaved your bikini line, your legs, your underarms. You're eating healthy so you can look cute in that fabulous little dress. You're doing everything and you're on top of your full-time job, your school, whatever. And this man hasn't given you a little something to say. I don't know how many suitors or what suitors you have, but I want you to take notice that I'm serious, that my intentions are sincere. He has not done nada. Girl, you're in trouble. That's a red... That's a glaring red flag. You see, remember in the last episode, I talked about how be slightly independent, show that you can take care of yourself, but you are being wooed. This is the stage of wooing. This is the stage of him running after you. If he's not running after you, if he's not trying to please you with the little that he's got or with the much that he's got, then darling, when I tell you, you are not front and center stage for him. He's not making you exclusive. Don't sit in the exclusive chair waiting for him to decide. You have to be out in the marketplace where there are thousands of suitors because you don't have time to waste. He does not make an effort to know your friends. He does not make an effort to know your family. He does not make an effort to impress them. It's a red flag. It's a red flag. I can only speak from experience. I can only speak humbly of my experience. I can only speak of the mistakes I made and what I did differently with Ula. I did it differently because I realized that for me, if you keep on banging your head on the wall, you're going to get the same result. You're constantly putting yourself in this position with the guys and it is not working. So you have to do something different in order for you to get a different result. When I was dating Ula, he made an effort with my father, my brother, my sister, my mom. He sent orchids to my mom 
and said, Before they die, I will see you. When he asked for my hand in marriage, he spoke to my father for hours. My father was in tears. He said, For me, my God. Because it was touching for my dad, because when my dad was a student in uh, Moscow University, he was a medical student, and my mom was a language student, they used to go to Denmark, part time jobs. And he said all of the work that he did in Denmark, because Denmark, Norway, and Sweden are Scandinavian countries. He said, I'm getting repaid with my Scandinavian son. And he was so touched because Ola spoke to him. When my mom traveled, I think my dad was alone. And he called my dad and said, I'm just calling to check on you because I know mommy is not around. And this is the thing. It is not Ula's culture at all, because you know how we Africans are. You have to kneel down. Good afternoon, ma. Good afternoon, sir. You know, he did all of that. He adopted the culture. He made an effort to speak our language because he wanted to show my family that he was serious. They do it. They do it. When they want you, they will make the effort. You won't even know. He's gone to say hello to your mom, to say, oh, I just wanted to say hello to you. I see how you're doing. Because he wants somebody to be on his side, to put a good word in for him, to say, I am serious. My intentions are sincere. It is so important. And it's very much African, Nigerian, Yoruba tradition. When a guy comes, who is his family? Who are his people? Ah, let's go and see. Let us go to his people during engagement. <laughs> and Daddy Vold, may his soul rest in peace. They showed up and they showed out. The Norwegians, they showed up and they showed out. Who are his people? They showed up. These are his people. These are our intentions. That was what brought about me having three weddings. <laughs> because the Nigerian family said, ah, we must have wedding. <laughs> Norway said, to Suntak. <laughs> We will also have wedding. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was fabulous. Because, yes, your families are happy for the union. They pray for the union. They wish the best on the union. They are here to support you any which way. That if all called me and said, anything Ula does, you come to me. God bless him. I don't want to cry. I wish. I wish he saw Adrian. I wish... Mommy Vold saw that her eyes are in Adrian. I wish. I'm just telling you my experience and how life-changing it was for me. He ghosts you. You don't hear from him. You don't hear from him for week, two weeks, and then he shows up. This is the most beautiful red flag of them all because the flag has been handed to you in an Hermes box. Darling, you are fabulous, and I am not. Don't waste time with me. He has shown you that you are not taken seriously by him. As he ghosts you, you no longer have anything in an intimate setting to do with him. Platonic, no problem. But he is completely off the chart. He's off the what? He's off the chart. He ghosts you. You lick your wounds. Cry if you want to, to a friend. Because you were really looking forward to seeing him. Do not see him again. And I'm going to make it a little bit softer here. Because I know it can be a little bit hard. In the event that you have slept with him. And he ghosts you after that. Let him go. Let him go. Close your eyes and say, the cookies was good. I enjoyed it. And that is all that came of it. Because guys are like that. They hunt, they chase, they get what they want. And then all of a sudden, the desire is no longer there. They're on to something else, someone else. I also want you to take these flags into account. Why? Because what you are looking for is not what he's able to offer. 
So you are there crying, I want, I want, but he can't give it to you. <laughs> Ola, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Because you know, they asked a couple of questions. They, they do want it, one or two questions. Yeah. What are two or three flags? What should they look out for if a guy is not serious? Well, if he likes you, he'll stay in contact, he'll call you, he'll show you, you know, that he appreciates you, likes you. He'll sh maybe he'll give you some small gifts to show. Okay. Because if he likes you, he doesn't want to lose you. So he'll give, have, make an effort to make sure he doesn't lose you. Okay. All right? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, like, bend down and say hi. Because they're, they're like, who are we talking to? It's me. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. He hasn't shaved. <laughs> That's it, my darlings. The flags are directly telling you this is not the guy. And you know, I'm going to give you another little tip. I was carrying Adrian at the airport. I was carrying Adrian at the airport. Ula was pushing our luggage and I met one of my exes. And it was so wonderful to have known that I dodged the bullet. That I dodged the bullet. He's divorced. He looked very haggard. I think he was, he, was, he was traveling home on holiday or whatever with one of the children. One of the other children was with the mom. And he was just looking at me as if to say, oh wow, I want that for you. I want you to marry the guy that loves you, that adores you, adores the children, and you have a future. When these guys give the red flags, that's no future with them. It hurts, I get it, because you wanted it to be him. But you also have to be fair, not put the pressure on the guys. When he's showing you indirectly, he's telling you, I I'm not the one, I'm not capable. Not all guys are men. Not all men are fathers. Not all men are husbands. It's an honor and it's a title and it's a responsibility that not all of them can do. Not all of them can do. So when they give you the red flag, take it and know that you know what is counterfeit. This is a fake Louis. <laughs> this is a fake Dior. I gotta go. All right, my darlings. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I will be back very, very soon with what? Another 10 questions to ask in the early stages of dating. Because if he's not doing it, you got to ask just to make sure you have it there. The receipts. <laughs> all of my love, darlings. I am wearing, this is all about bronze today. It's bronze sugar. Hello, sugar. Yes, yes, yes. This is uh, Iman. I love Iman. I love me some Iman. And this lip gloss, I don't have it here. But, oh, yes, I do. It's called brownie. Gorgeous, metallic -y, beautiful. Just makes you look very goddessy. I live for it. All right, my darlings, and this is uh, Balenciaga. It's not really showing very well because of the sun coming in, but it's all flowers, and it's all flowered in in the back as well. Do you see? Very fabulous. All right, darlings, gotta go. Mwah, mwah. <laughs>